Well, hello, and we find ourselves once again out under the stars in the middle of nowhere, my favorite place to be. Now, tonight, what we're going to be doing is a bit of a comparison with four different lenses. Now, I have with me my Nikon D750, and I've got the Nikon 14 to 24 f2.8. I've got the um, Nikon 20 millimeter f1.8. I've got the Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4. And I've got the trusty old Nikon 50 millimeter f1.8. Now you're probably wondering, well, well, so what? What are you doing with that? What I'm going to do is shoot the exact same subject with all four lenses set to the same settings on the same camera. And I'm gonna do a comparison. I'm gonna show you my setup and the way that I, I do that. And then at the end, I just wanna see what, what the pictures look like. I, I'm pretty um, interested myself just to get a bit of a comparison. I'm obviously gonna to have to have a different distance between me and the foreground subject. I've got a tree over there which I've lined up. Milky Way core is coming up behind that tree. So let's go and have a look at that and I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, so if you look over there behind me, you'll see a tree. It's just a dead tree that I found in a paddock out here. It's not particularly uh, attractive in any way, but it will provide a great foreground subject matter for my test with these lenses. Also, it's uh, standing pretty much alone on this hill. Um, there's not a whole lot of other trees around it to distract from the background. So I was looking around to find something. It's been a little bit windy, but it seems to have calmed down now, which is good. Having said that, these dead trees don't blow around very much in the wind, so that's good. So I'm gonna go and set up my first camera. I'll start with the 14 millimeter, and we'll work our way through until we get to the 50 mil. So let's do that. Okay, so here we go. Here's our first lens test. This is the Nikon 14 to 24, set at 14 millimeters. Now the camera settings are uh, f2.8 aperture, um, 20 second shutter speed, and I'm shooting at an ISO of 6400. Just going to be doing single shots here and I'm going to get over to the side and just put a little bit of side light on the side of the tree. I don't want to light the tree too much. I want it to stand out against the sky. The other thing I will be doing though is I'll be putting a low level light behind the tree just to give it a little bit of separation from the background but that's going to be on a very low level so I'll show you that now. Okay so I've got my Z96 video light which I'm going to place down here uh, facing up towards the tree. I've got a rock positioned here on the ground so I can actually prop the light up. Now this light has to be hidden from the camera so it's directly behind the tree and I've got it set on a, a really low level so hence the term low level lighting and I'm going to leave it there on that same setting for every other shot that I shoot tonight. It's just going to sit here. Um, these things go for hours with the battery so I've got no problem with that. So let's get on with it. Okay, so now the light's set behind the tree. I'm about eight meters from the tree with this lens. The lens is set to infinity, so we're just gonna take a couple of shots now and uh, see how that comes out. Okay, so the next lens that I'm going to be using is the absolutely awesome Nikon 20mm f1.8. I use this lens more than any other and I absolutely love it. It's small, lightweight, easy to pack, easy to carry, It's just and it's a good performer. Really, really enjoy using this lens. So what I'm doing is I'm stopping it down to f2.8. I'm shooting at ISO 6400, same as we did with the 14mm. Uh, and the other thing I'm changing though is the shutter speed. I'm taking it down to 15 seconds rather than the 20 seconds I shot with the 14 mil. Uh, that's simply because of a little bit longer focal length. The longer the focal length, the shorter the shutter speed has to be because the apparent movement of the stars becomes greater. So I'm about, I reckon, 15 meters away from that tree now. I've had to move back a bit to get a similar field of view. So let's take a shot. I'm a bit worried a few clouds are coming in, so I wanna get some shots in before that happens. Let's do it.
Now our third lens for testing is the, this is another awesome lens, the Sigma 35mm f1.4 Art Series. And apart from the Nikon 20mm I just showed you, this is my favourite lens. <laughs> it just renders images so beautifully, as I think a lot of the Sigma Art Series lenses do. Um, so I've had to get back, I'm about 20, 23 metres back from the tree now, to get a similar field of view to what I had before with the other two lenses. Um, I'm shooting this one at f2.8, ISO 6400, as I did before, but I've even dropped the shutter speed down to 10 seconds, which is even lesser than I had with the 20mm, obviously because it's a longer focal length lens. I don't want those stars trailing, so I need to have a pretty short shutter time. So, um, happy with that, let's see how we go. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering how I know where the Milky Way is going to be behind this tree. Well, I'm using the augmented reality view in photo pills. So all you do is you open it up, point your phone at the subject that you're looking at, which in this case is the tree, and move to the time that you want to shoot. And you will see that the Milky Way core, in this case, is directly behind the tree, exactly where I want it to be. Okay, well I'm absolutely wrapped with these longer focal length lenses and it's just amazing what you can get when you start playing with different focal lengths. Now, this is the 50mm f1.8 Nikon lens. It's a very common, fairly cheap lens to buy. A lot of people have got these and I highly recommend you give it a go for nightscapes. Now, I've had to get back about 33 metres away from the tree just to fit it in because it's a 50 mil. Um, so what I've done with this one is I've uh, left the shutter speed at 10 seconds, which is really on the limit, I think, but I've left it there. ISO 6400, the same as the rest, and at f2.8. So they've all been at f2.8, all been at ISO 6400. The only thing I've been able to do with the wider focal length lenses is extend the shutter speed. And that's probably the big advantage of using wider angle lenses. You can leave the shutter open longer because you'll be, uh, there'll be less noticeable star trailing. But apart from that, these longer focal length lenses are certainly worth a go. And you'll see, when you see the comparison of these four images together, just how much more of that Milky Way uh, detail you can get. But anyway, here's the 50 mil. I'm gonna shoot that now. We'll give it a go and see what we come up with. Okay, well, there you go. That was a, quite an interesting comparison, wasn't it? I was actually a little bit surprised myself. I've never actually done a direct test one after the other, even though I've owned those four lenses, some of them for years, um, but shooting the same subject, exactly the same tripod position, except moving straight back to work out the focal length distance uh, is the only thing that was really changed. And I think the results speak for themselves, but anyway, that's about all I've got for you today. I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'm starving at the moment. It's probably about midnight. Been out here for a few hours. Love it though. It's fantastic out here under the stars. And you know, I love sharing the moment with you guys. And you know, I really appreciate the fact that you spend the time to watch my videos. Love it. So thanks so much. Happy to uh, chat with you in the comments section below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys out under the stars again real soon.